Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm going to continue my series on an introduction to 3D printing. And today we're going to take a look at bed leveling. Now, I should mention we have two types of printers that you'll typically see. Those that are Marlin-based, such as the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro, S1, etc. And then also those that use Clipper. To start off with today, we're just going to look at bed leveling on a Marlin printer. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, to start off, I'm actually going to revisit one of my older videos to do Marlin bed leveling. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I've upgraded all my printers to run Clipper. And I had to dig back through my archive, so I'm looking at a video from 2023. And what I'm going to do is use that footage and the descriptions I used in that video to show how I level a bed, and then towards the end, I'll switch over and show some updates on different tips and tricks that I use. So hopefully you find this helpful, and definitely, particularly if you're a beginner, don't hesitate to reach out and ask questions. And if I have time and I can, I'll try to get back with you. So with that being said, let's travel on the time machine back to 2023 where my sound quality and camera quality wasn't quite as good as it is today, and take a look at how to level printer running Marwin. So I'm going to show you my process and how I do this. The tools I use is I do use a feeler gauge. That's a first step. I'm just gonna turn my printer on, and I'm just gonna go ahead and run a home via the interface. So I'll just go to homing and then auto home, and just make sure that's all still working. Now, in the case of the default setup for the Neo, the probe is already set at the perfect point. So it's probed. To start my process here, what I'm gonna do is looking at the screen, I'm gonna go to prepare, scroll down to probe lizard, and then let's go ahead and auto home and we'll go ahead and start this process. Once I've homed, I'm just gonna go move Z to home, and that moves Z to the middle of the bed. Now, this is using my current probe offset, which is negative 0.45. Now, in my case, I use a feeler gauge, but you can use a piece of paper. I like the feeler gauge because now I have a set tool. I do the 0.1 millimeter, so I'm gonna run that underneath. I can already feel that I can't slip this under the nozzle. So I'm gonna go down here to probe offset, click on it, and I'm gonna start moving this up. So I've moved it up off the bed. I can now slip this underneath. Get this so you can see a little better. So I'm slipping it underneath. Maybe I'll go from this side, although I'm gonna get in the way of the screen. I hold with one finger, I hold it down, just go back and forth. Now I'm just going to move it closer to the bed. And I've moved it up too high, which is fine, but it's still going back and forth. Grabbing a little bit now. So now I'm back to negative again. You can hardly see it, but I'm at point, now I'm at negative 0.24. And it's really starting to grab now, but I'm going to keep going down because I want it to barely fit under the nozzle. Negative 0.3. That feels pretty good to me. That's really tight. So what that's moving, the nozzle's really tight against my PEI surface. We have the Z offset set. So we're going to click, go to back, and I think we need to go to advanced, sorry, advanced, and then store settings just to make sure the settings are stored. So I've got to test each corner, and then I'm going to go back to the center and redo the center. So that's my process for leveling the bed. From the main menu, I'm going to go to prepare. There's probably a better way of doing this. It's just how I do it. I just do disable steppers. Then I go ahead and just physically move the nozzle. What I'm trying to do is get the nozzle right above the screw here. Run my feeler gauge underneath. I can barely move it underneath. That feels good. Maybe I'm going to go up just a little bit more. Just going to push it over. 
now to this corner. Now, it doesn't feel like it's moving underneath here well, so I'm just going to go ahead and start moving the bed down a little bit. So I want it to barely be able to get the feeler gauge underneath. So once I have the corners, I'm going to go back over to the screen and go back to Z-Probe Wizard. I'm going to do an auto home. Because I've moved the screws, the center is going to be a little bit different now. I've done the auto home. Now I want to do, move Z to home to move the nozzle into the center of the bed. Now I still have it at negative 0.43. And this feels really loose now. So I'm going to go back down to the probe offset. And I want to move this down. Now it feels like it's grabbing. So I have it at negative 0.58. Should be pretty good. On my next step, I want to go ahead and load first layer test that I can use to make all this work. Since I recorded bed leveling in 2023, I have a different methodology I recommend for that initial test. Right? What I do is I start off on the first layer squish section of Ellis's print tuning guide. Now, for the most part, the print tuning guide is directed more towards Clipper than it is Marwin. But the test files here can be used easily for your Marlin device. So what I'm going to do is scroll down here and open up the test prints folder. And there's two different STLs and they're located in the first layer patches folder. So I'll go in there and my first layer is typically set to 0.3 millimeters. So I'm just going to download that file and use that as my test print. I've downloaded the test print. I'm going to open up Orca Slicer. So within Orca Slicer, I'm just going to drag and drop that first layer patch into the center of the bed. And rather than use a different model or something set up for my print bed, I just want one model I can use for every printer. So I just take that initial patch, clone it four times, and then simply drag each patch or each square over to approximately where the bed screws are. So with my five patches on the bed, I'm simply going to slice and send this to the printer. So let's send it to the printer and then I'll switch over and show you the next step in the process. I should mention right before it prints, I want to clean the bed because I want a clean bed surface. And I use my 99% isopropyl alcohol, my microfiber rag, and just give the bed a good wipe. And with that clean, I'm now ready for that first print. And this will take a minute to start. Now, once the printer starts going, what I need to do is check to see if the square is printing appropriately and laying down. And I can tell in this back corner it's not. So I've raised the bed up some. Now in the second half of the print, it did much better. I'm going to raise the bed up here a little bit as well. So I'm just using these test swaths and literally looking at them, making sure they're sticking to the bed. And then they look good. Now initially, the bed needs to be raised up a little bit more. So I'm just now in the front here, and that's raise it up a little bit. And I'm probably going to need to raise this corner a little bit too. That's okay. So raising the bed is not really an issue. And it looks like as I'm printing these squares, they're looking better and better. The one in the center already looks pretty good. Now, if when it comes to the one in the center, whatever is your baby stepping method, whether it's your interface in Marlin, use that, or the web interface in Clipper, you just want to baby step the bed. So this last square is actually looking pretty good. And I'll pull the squares off so you can see them. And I could probably do another round of adjustments. But right now, this is fairly reasonable and this is a great first try. So I might want to just run through these again and make some further adjustments. 
Right now, I think I'm going to leave it as is. So I'm going to start with the one in the back here. And if you look at this, you'll notice the border came off and was not weighing down correctly. But then once it got printing and I raised the bed up, the lines look pretty good. Same holds true for the next tab. The borders look a little funky. But again, raising the bed up via the bed screws. This one, everything looks all right. Maybe I want to move the bed down just a tiny little bit. But overall, that looks good. This one looks pretty good as well. Maybe move the bed down just a tiny little bit. And lastly, the one in the center. Again, looks fairly good. Maybe needs a little bit of adjustment. This is how I level the bed. So what you can do is if you've made some adjustments with the bed screws, you can go ahead and reprint that model. You saw how quickly it is. The model itself takes maybe 10 minutes and that's with the printer heating. It's pretty much nothing. It's only doing one layer. So it's doing one layer and fairly quick. And as you make adjustments, I just print that again. If the bed gets out of whack uh, down the road, because periodically I find that the bed will get out of level if I move it or move things around on my desk, I just run the patches again. And usually I can just do some adjustments with the screws at the bottom of the bed and get it exactly where I need to go. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I'll talk to you again soon.